Okay, so I have today Jacqueline Geisler with us and she is going to take you to a spectacular national park. So Jacqueline, what's the name of your park? Glacier National Park. And when did it actually become a federally protected land? It was established in 1910. Yep, so for a long time now. It was one of the earlier parks. And this map shows us where it is. What state is it in? Glacier National Park is located in Montana. Perfect. And class, do you notice how close it is to the Canadian border, right? So this is in the very northern part of Montana. And so these are some views that we have. So just study those. Okay, and I'm going to show you a two more pictures. Now I don't want to give too much away, but watch me outline this, right? We see a special letter of the alphabet there. Okay, and then this is your video. Jacqueline, tell us about it. Is it just kind of an overview video? Yeah, it just shows the places. All right, there. very nice. So we'll let that go. <laughs> Jacqueline, have you been here? No. Hmm. That's a moose, isn't it? Yeah, I think it Turn is. Out, a moose, I think. So would you like to hike that area? Yeah, I think it'd be cool just to see the cool views. Yeah, me too. I've been here, actually. I didn't do a tremendous amount of hiking. That gives a sense of scale, doesn't it? Do you know what animal that is? Uh, no, I don't. That little groundhog looking thing is called a marmot. M-A-R-M-O-T. Cool. Class, notice the layering there. That's going to be important when she talks about her rock types. Are those bears? Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> hey, whatever bird that was, it was a crazy bird. You've obviously seen that video and I haven't because you didn't even laugh at that bird. Okay, so let's get into your landscape explanation. So how did this beautiful place form? Glacier National Park was formed mainly by paths left by glaciers and glaciers themselves. If you were to travel to Glacier National Park, you would see horns, sharp edged peaks, cirques, bowl shaped diversions, terminal moraines, which are debris push to the end, lateral moraines, which is debris pushed to the side, U-shaped valleys, and also kettle lakes, which are depressions left behind that are filled with water. Yes, and so all of that has happened rather recently in time. So how did the rocks get there? Because your park actually has some really old rocks. What type are they? Uh, they are sedimentary rocks like agarite or quartite, materials that can be found in many colors. Yeah, and so you notice that in the video, and it's, there's a lake there called Lake McDonald that's famous for its beautifully colored rocks in it. And so um, when we think of sedimentary rocks, Jacqueline, when, where are those laid down? Do you remember that? Uh, underwater. Yeah, so this was honestly an ancient ocean, and some of the rocks there are in the billions, not millions of years old. So some of the oldest rocks on our continent are found in Glacier National Park. And so how did you connect this to our class? I think I know. The activity or lesson that connects from our class to the geology of Glacier National Park is our stream table activity. Through that activity, we learn the effects of gradient and force, resulting from the shaping of the land around us. Glaciers are just like the force that pushes away things in front of us. 
Examples are Kettle Lakes, Terminal Moraines, Lateral Moraines, and U-shaped valleys. Yeah, and if I'm gonna go back up here just a second, so you heard me saying, oh, right, look at that U. I was getting them to think about that. And then this is a horn right here. And I'm, I'm thinking that's probably a Kettle Lake. Um, I don't think you had a picture of cirques, but they're common all around there too. So what about if uh, we went to this park, what specific things could we do? Uh, we could go to Barron Falls, which is a beautiful waterfall that spills into Barron Creek, from which Barron Creek spills into St. Mary Lake. The waterfall is easily accessible through a less challenging hike. Nice. And so in the spring and summer especially, why are there so many waterfalls there? Can you think that through? Because the snow and ice from the glaciers is melting. Yeah, and so part of that is connected to global warming, honestly, but that's also just a seasonal thing, even if global warming wasn't an environmental issue. When I was first looking at your project, I thought it said boring falls. <laughs> no, bearing falls, right, when we get typing. I had not heard of that exact waterfall till you. Okay, what other attractions? There is Huckleberry Lookout, which is which has trail, which the trail has a lot of animal life because it is lined in huckleberries, which the animals eat. Mm -hmm. Once you reach the lookout, you can see on a clear day miles of the Livingston Range in Huckleberry Mountain. Nice. And then um, this is probably the most one of the most famous attractions there. What's this one called? Hidden Lake. The mm -hmm. lake is surrounded by multiple mountains, which include Bear Hat Mountain and Mount Cannon making it a beautiful sight to see on a clear and sunny day. If you take the trail to Hidden Lake Overlook, it is only about 1.3 miles long and is fairly easy. Yeah, and so um, another attraction that is actually like, it's kind of an attraction. The road that goes through Glacier National Park is called Going to the Sun Road. And that's where like all these attractions you can hit. And it's called Going to the Sun because it is such a high elevation road. And it's a beautiful drive. And I think it's around 40 miles, but it is scary in places because <laughs> it's just this drop off. So what about your plant life? Oh, yeah. Uh, my first plant is huckleberries, which are shrubs that have simple oblong leaves. They have born flowers on them that are typical. They have flowers on them that are typically born in small clusters and they have fruit on them that can attract animals. Right. And then another plant is a fern, which is a common plant. There are many species of them across North America. In Glacier National Park, there are 62 species of ferns in their allies. And then what about your final plant? Wild bergamot. Woo. The wild bergamot is also known as bee balm. It is a widespread and abundant flower that is in the mint family. The wildflower attracts a number of bees and wasps. And that's actually good because they're pollinators, but you may not want to get too close. Okay, now you you have lots of animal life to choose from. What animals did you pick? Oh. My first animal I picked was the snowshoe hare. This hare got its name from its large hind feet. Its feet help it not sink in the snow when it walks or hops. They can be found in the forests of North America and their first turn white in the winter and brown in the summer. Perfect. And then your next animal is the elk. This species is one of the largest within the deer family. They move to higher elevations in the summer and low elevations in the fall. Elk feed on grasses, plants, leaves, and bark. And then your final animal is bears. At, not, at the national park there are bear, black bears and grizzly bears. Mm -hmm. The park is known for the bears because they eat the plants that grow around there. Black bears have taller ears and darker claws. Grizzly bears have lighter claws and shorter ears. It is recommended to stay at least 100 yards or 300 feet away. And so that one's a grizzly then, right? Yes, I think. Okay, I think so too. Okay, and then what about your news? <laughs> it's connected to your last animal, isn't it? Yep. One event that happened is a 650 pound grizzly bear chased a group of hikers at Glacier National Park. One of the hikers had an infant and tried to scare the bear away. No one was injured physically by the grizzly bears, but the hikers were a little shaken up. Yeah, and they actually caught it on video, someone far away that was telling them to run. So, um, and this was recently, I think just this fall. So your personal reflection, Jacqueline, what was the most interesting thing you learned? The most interesting part about Glacier National Park is the way the land has changed over time. Glaciers have changed the way the park has looked in the water in the way the water remains at the park, like hidden lakes and waterfalls. Mm -hmm. If I was going to visit this national park, I'd like to hike the Hidden Lake Overlook to see the beautiful sight of the lake. 
Yeah, and you have so many gorgeous pictures, you might have saved the best for last. Right, and so what's interesting is we start to see wildflowers bloom here in like late March, early April. Theirs bloom more like June, right? Because they're so far north compared to us. Um, that's just gorgeous. So um, as a student in the class, you might need to pause me right now to open up your, um, your presentation chart, okay? But let's go through. So this is Jacqueline. Her name is right there, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E. And her park is Glacier in the state of Montana. And we don't mean to be silly, but her dominant force is glaciers, right? Your dominant force that shaped the land that's left these U-shaped valleys and cirques and horns and all of that is glacial erosion. So that should go there. And then Jacqueline just turned a four. She did marvelously. But um, you're ranking it based on how much you would like to visit. So some attractions, just to remind you, We've got, not the Boring Falls, the Bering Falls, B-A-R-I-N-G. And then this is one I hadn't heard of either till Jacqueline, Huckleberry Lookout, where you can go and have a good chance to find wildlife. And then also like Jacqueline, Hidden Lake is gorgeous. McDonald Lake, if you want to get a good picture of colorful stones, the water's so clear there. McDonald Lake is well known. And also if you just want like um, an overview you could put going to the Sun Road or just Glacier National Park and get some stunning views. Okay, so Jacqueline, well done, kiddo. I'm going to stop our recording.